Hello, I'm North Hempstead Town Supervisor Judy Bosworth, and I, along with our town board, are proud to present At Home with North Hempstead, a series of special programs for children, seniors, as well as entertainment for residents of all ages. We hope you enjoy this special presentation and check back often for new content. Welcome everybody, I'm Eric the Reptile Guy and today we're here on our special show to learn all about different species from around the world and today we're going to guess about a species that's from a really awesome place and we're going to get a chance to see it in a few minutes and you at home and our guests here are going to get a chance to guess what species it is and so behind this, me there's a screen and on the screen we're going to get a chance to see it in just a few minutes and the clues will pop up. Alright well let's look at the screen and see if the screen will re reveal what it is first. A ball python, that's what it is. David got it right. Everybody give David a big hand. Woo! Come up here, David, you get to wear the hat. Come on up here, David. So David gets to wear the hat. Dun, 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 dun. David's wearing the hat now. So David's gonna be our safari, on our safari with us to go search for ball pythons. The habitat of the ball python is actually the savannas of Africa. Many people think they're from jungles, but they are not. They're from the dry savannas of Africa and they live in burrows in the ground. So David, do you wanna go see if we can find one? Sure. That's it, David. That's it. That's actually the habitat of the ball python. You can see right down there. That's exactly the, the habitat that they live in. And the reason that they're in there is because tortoises and other animals dig holes and they utilize those holes for, for their home to stay inside there. Thank you, David. Thanks for joining us for that. Good job on, on guessing the right way. Now we're going to get a chance to learn about ball pythons today with our expert, Kevin. Ball pythons are native to West and Central Africa, spanning more than 20 countries. Their habitat is grasslands and savannas, although they can occasionally be found in forests. In Nigeria, with the Igbo people greatly respected and honored to the python. If they were found in the village, they would be gently removed and returned to their surrounding environment. This may be why the pythons are also called the royal python. In the early 1970s, some of the countries in their range began exporting thousands of ball pythons for the pet trade. Sadly, many of them died because they were the first generation of many that were likely stressed from being removed from their native home and from parasites. Today, because of captive breeding projects and careful husbandry, the ball pythons are now one of the most popular pet snakes worldwide. They have even been featured on covers of magazines. They are the smallest of all species of pythons, reaching a length of up to five feet and can live more than 40 years. And there you have it, a brief history of the Royal Ball Python. Now we're gonna get a chance to meet our snakes right here and uh, our actual live ball pythons. So if you could ask a snake a question, what would the question be? What would you ask the snake? Why does snake have designs on them? Oh, what, what about the designs on the snake? So a ball python has all these patterns on it so it can camouflage in the savanna because there are plenty of animals that would want to try to eat it. For example, the savanna monitor lizard that you can see right now on the screen there, that's a savanna monitor lizard. Also, um, there's lions that might find a ball python pretty tasty. And there also might be uh, a jackal, any animals in Africa. It's quite dangerous in Africa if you're, if you're living there. So it's good for them to be able to have this pattern to camouflage itself. So Isaiah, um, I'm gonna show you how to handle a ball python. So if you have a snake as a pet, 
and you want to learn how to handle it. Handling is very important. So the first thing is when you handle your snake, watch Isaiah, one sec. So just watch, when you handle them, you want to let them kind of go to you and not just grab them. So here, just put your hand out flat like that. And you're going to put your hand flat, just like that. And then you can let, let them it, crawl around. Just, yeah, just let them crawl around. And then you see where the head is? You want to put your hand right by the, right, right by the head. That's yeah. good. All right, cool. Is your take tongue poisonous? Hmm? No, no, it's not poisonous. This is not a poisonous snake at all. This is a harmless snake. This one's harmless. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Hey, everybody. I'm Eric the Reptile Guy, and today we're going to discover bullfrogs. We're now in the habitat of the North American bullfrog, and there's one right there. I remember when I was a kid, I used to catch them. It brings back so many memories. It's the coolest thing ever. Bullfrogs are native to North America and can be found from Florida to as far north as Canada. The natural habitat of the bullfrog includes clean, fresh water, which is becoming more and more rare nationwide. Bullfrogs also share habitat with turtles, snakes, birds, and many other creatures that love to live in wetlands. If we're lucky, we'll have a chance to find bullfrogs with all of our friends. Now it's time to meet up with our friends. Today, we're going to discover the North American bullfrog, scientifically known as Rana Caraspiana. We're gonna take our friends here on Long Island to go to a swamp where the bullfrog lives. And we're gonna have an awesome time. You guys ready to have some fun? Yeah! Have a great time. We're gonna, today we're gonna to actually discover bullfrogs. Now, who knows what a bullfrog is? Raise your hand. Who knows what a bullfrog is? Mia, what's a bullfrog? Um, it's a frog. It's a frog? Okay, it's a frog. We know it's a frog. Thousands of species of frogs worldwide. And there are three species of bullfrogs, including the South American bullfrog, the African bullfrog, and of course, the North American bullfrog. Before heading out on our adventure, the children and I take a look at maps to see exactly where we could find frogs right here on Long Island. So they live all along here. So I want you guys to say a word, okay? On the count of three, we're all going to say it together. Ready? One, two, three. Everybody say native species. Native species. That means that it's found here. And so there's some species that are not from here. Those would be considered? Invasive. Invasive species. Invasive species sounds like a really crazy word, but really what it means is it's an animal that was actually introduced to a place and sort of took over. In some places in the United States, bullfrogs have taken over, like in places like California, where they're not native to, where they affect other animals. Or, there's another word I like a little bit better, it's called non-native species. So an invasive species would be one that takes over completely, but a, nat a non-native species would be kind of like hanging out with the other species, just chilling out with all the rest of them, like we're going to see in a little while. But they live all along the East Coast. This is where we're going to find all bullfrogs, all the way down to like Florida, you can find bullfrogs. And does anybody know how big they get? Anyone know how big they get? How big do they get? Let's see, let's see. How about someone else? Ar Ariana. About, yeah, they get like a foot long. They get like this big. When I was a kid, I used to catch them, and you know how big they were? They were like the size of like footballs, like seriously. Frogs start their life off in the water, and there are four stages to frog life cycles. What does a tadpole do when it changes? What is it called? What's the change called? Dane, what's it called? They metamorphosize. Metamorphosize or metamorphosis. So everybody on the count of three say metamorphosis. Ready? One, two, three. Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis is when an animal actually changes from when it's a baby until it's an adult. Bullfrogs, and all frogs for that matter, most frogs, will actually change from the time they're born from a tadpole into a frog. They actually grow back legs and arms and their tails actually shrink into their body during a period of time which they cannot eat at all. It's the coolest thing ever and we may even get a chance to see some tadpoles in the process of metamorphosis. 
a baby frog is called a tadpole. A tadpole. And then a, a one before that is called froglet. A, a froglet. Very good. And then the one after that is called a frog. It's just a frog. Yeah, it's just a frog. So. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this frog right here. Here's actually bu actual bullfrog. This is an actual bullfrog. Now, if you look at this frog right here, you'll notice there's a couple of cool features. Does anybody know what that is right there? Does anybody know what it is? What's it called, George? Tympanic membrane. Tympanic membrane. Very good. Everybody say tympanic membrane. Tympanic membrane. It's like having a drum on your head. Everybody go like that to your head, but not too hard like that. So it's like having a drum on your head, and that's actually how the frogs hear. Every frog that can hear with the tympanic membrane has a different frequency of sound that they can hear. So every frog has a different one. So this bullfrog hears a sound that goes like this. You're gonna, you guys are all gonna make the sound right now. It goes. Everyone make that sound. That's the actual sound of the bullfrog, and they can hear it with the tympanic membrane. That's how they know other frogs are around, and then that's how the females know the frogs are there, and they lay all their eggs, and then we have all the tadpoles like we're gonna see today in just a little while. Now, there's one really, really important thing I wanna tell you about frogs, but we're gonna look at our frog model right now to give you all the details about the anatomy of the frog. Now, we won't be able to see the inside of the frog today, but we're gonna still do the anatomy lesson. Hey everybody, welcome to our frog anatomy lesson. This is gonna be the coolest lesson ever because we're gonna learn all about the anatomy of frogs and we don't have to use a live frog to do it because this is our frog right here, our frog model. So we're gonna do it right now, but we're not gonna do it with a real frog, we're gonna do it with a fake frog. Now check this out guys, frogs are one of the coolest amphibians and we wanna make sure that we always protect them by using plastic models, so not using live animals. This is actually a frog model. This is not a bullfrog frog model. This is actually a, a model of a, a pine barrens tree frog, but it's the same anatomy on the inside. So we're not focused on the outside. We're going to focus on the inside. So if you look there, you can see from the side, that's the inside clear part, and you can see all the different guts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take them apart, and we're going to see all the inside components of the frog. Now, if you take a look, guys, these are all the inner workings of the frog all the different organs that the frogs have. There's the lungs right there. There's the skeleton. So here, I got a question. Who knows, is a frog a vertebrate or invertebrate? Vertebrate. It's a vertebrate, because you know why? It has bones. Take a look at this. This is actually the backbone of the frog. Frogs have a backbone. So everybody pat your backbone. The backbone is right there, and that actually helps to protect them. So you can see on their backbone, they have special bumps called vertebrae. Vertebrae are so important because without vertebrae, guess what? You can't function because all your nerves are inside there. Let's look on this for, for a quick second. This frog, this one's a female, so she doesn't have vocal sacs. So when we go to the swamp and we go see the frogs there, you're going to notice that, that there's going to be some with yellow throats and some with non-yellow throats. The ones with non-yellow throats are usually females, unless it's a really, really young male. They'll all have yellow throats when they become mature. And you'll know it's a bullfrog because you see that right there? See that right there? The noise we just made, everybody do it again. That noise that they make actually is heard by that. Now everybody point to your ears. And everybody say tympanic membrane. Tympanic membrane. That's like the membrane that they use that vibrates that allows the frogs to actually hear the sounds. And so that's how they hear, by using the tympanic membrane. And the bullfrog, you see this like little fold right there over the eye, like over the ear, like that little fold right there? The bullfrog has that. We're going to see another frog there, most likely called the green frog that won't have this fold like that. It's gonna have a line going down either side of the back. So you'll know that th that's a green frog. So your job today is you guys are gonna help identify the frogs as we find them, whether it's a male, whether it's a female, whether it's a green frog, or whether it's a bullfrog. Children were so interested in what they were learning. And one of the most important lessons they learned today was to make sure you always respect nature. This is why it's really best that if you go into nature and you see them out there, it's much better because then they're gonna live a long time. They're gonna get really big and then they'll survive and they'll get to reproduce and add something positive to the environment. Otherwise, then you just have a dead frog in a tank and that's no fun, right? Is that fun? Do you think that's fun? No, no it's not fun, it's not fun. So anyway, so you guys wanna see the first frog before we go to the swamp? Yeah. Okay, so if you wanna see a frog, who can tell me what noise does a bullfrog make? George. That's exactly right, good job, George, good job, good job. So everybody do it together, ready? One, two, three. Actually, it's a, a little bit deeper. It's like, are we going to do that? All right, good. So it's, it's like that, and then they puff their throat, throats out. They have vocal sex. So now before we take them all the way apart, I have a question. Is a frog a vertebrate or invertebrate? Invertebrate. 
vertebrate. Right, Francesca. In, uh, vertebrate. Vertebrate. It's a vertebrate because if you're a vertebrate, what do you have? Bones. 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 Now, if you go like that, guys, pat your, your chest like that, you have ribs that connect like that. If you're a frog, your ribs only are on the top. They have short ribs that protect their inner organs. So the important inner organs, including their heart and their lungs, which we're going to see right now. Now, here are the lungs of the frog and the heart. The heart and lungs are so, so important because without the heart and lungs, guys, the heart is really important because it pumps the blood through their body. And so as it's pumping the blood through their body, they get all the nutrients and the oxygen and all the things that help the frog to move. And their lungs actually help them too. Breathe in and out just like that. And their lungs and their body work continuously to help keep the frog alive. <laughs> now, the last thing we're going to take a look at, guys, is going to be the stomach. Now, if you're hungry, you can feel your stomach growling. Well, there's the frog's stomach right there. That stomach actually helps to digest all the bugs and things like that like to eat. And a digestive soup of acid that helps to digest it. So the following day, the frog can actually go to the bathroom and then all the plants in the pond where the frog lives absorb all the nutrients and keep everything going. It's all about the balance of nature, you guys. And that's the anatomy of the frog. And the last thing we're gonna look at is, let's see, this part right here. Does anybody know what this is right here? Does anybody know what it is? What is it? It's like the eggs. Yes, it's the eggs. Without the eggs, guess what happens? They can't reproduce and that's the end of it. That's the end of the species. So they have to be able to reproduce. They need all these eggs. And you know how many eggs they have inside them? Thousands of eggs. There's some frogs that can lay 10,000 eggs at, some, at one time. The bullfrog lays hundreds of eggs at one time. It's really incredible. So that's what we're going to get to see today. Hey, Dr. Callender, are bullfrogs an endangered species? Are bullfrogs an endangered species? No, they're not endangered species. However, frogs worldwide are becoming endangered everywhere because of a special fungus called chytrid fungus. I'll say it again. Chytrid fungus, like a fungus on your toe, if you have to get athlete's foot. <laughs> but anyway, so yes, they're not in danger. To answer your question, they're not in danger. But again, frogs worldwide are going to need help. So we should start right now with the bullfrog. Dr. Calder, do bullfrogs lay eggs? Bullfrogs lay eggs. The answer is yes. They lay thousands of eggs. They lay so many eggs, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, there's so many. As a matter of fact, they lay the eggs in the water, and that's just before they go to metamorphosis. Remember Eric was talking about that earlier today? Yes, the bullfrogs lay eggs. That's a calendar. How do bullfrogs make sounds? <laughs> well, bullfrogs make all kinds of sounds because every frog can make a different sound. Now, not all frogs can make sounds, but bullfrogs do. And the sound goes something like this. Actually, actually, oh my God, oh my God, I remember when I was down at the swamp, I was, I remember it was, I was with Eric, and Eric was making the sound. Eric the reptile guy was making the sound like, burr, burr, burr. and then the frog was doing it too. Oh my God, it was listening to the same sound as Eric. Because you know why? Because frogs hear different frequencies of sound. It's the frequency. So if it's a low frequency, it'll be like Rrr. If it's a high frequency, it'll be like Whoa. So yeah, it's all about the frequency and the sound. Dr. Calendar, how far can bullfrogs jump? How far can frogs jump? Well, he is a ruler, and you know what? A bullfrog, I've seen him do this, I've seen him do this many times. A bullfrog is about five inches. I've seen him jump at least at least 25 inches. That's five times the length of their body. Oh, wow. Okay, oh, goodness. I gotta call Jungle Janine. There's the Eric and them are going in that frog hunt. Hey, Dr. Calendar. Hey. I'm wondering if you can help us get some supplies for the frogs. Eric, the reptile guy, is going to look for frogs with the kids. Oh boy, that's going to be fun. Well, the first thing you need is you need some kind of a critter keeper so you can see the bullfrog after you catch him. Then, 
In order to catch them, you're going to need a very large net, because remember, the bullfrogs are the largest frog in North America. Now, don't forget to wear the proper clothing and have everybody wear boots so they can get wet in the water. And don't forget also that they want to keep their hands nice and clean and, and have them be a little wet so that they don't hurt the bullfrog. And if you need proper permits, that might be something you want as well. Okay, bless you. We're going to have a great time looking for them frogs. Oh, any time, Dr. Calendar, any time. And are you guys ready to actually see the frogs? Are you guys ready? Yes. Yeah. Ready? So we're going to go to the swamp and we're going to go get to see frogs. We're going to get muddy and wet and dirty <laughs> and it's going to be so much fun. So you guys ready for that? Yeah. All right, so let's go. Let's go, let's go. We're now here at one of the coolest bullfrog ponds that I've ever been to, but there's three species of frogs here that we might see today. We're gonna see green frogs, pickerel frogs, and the big bullfrog that we've been wanting to see for a while, and our kids are gonna help us find it and see if we can identify which frog is the bullfrog, green frog, or pickerel frog. Let's see right now, let's go. Yeah. The important thing with frogs is that, remember guys, the tadpoles, they, they have gills right now, so you can't leave them out of the water too long. If you leave them out of the water too long, then they'll die. So you have to make sure, like when we do this, we're gonna do this quickly, and we're gonna scoop up some water. So everybody first get your hands like that, and then wet your hands like that. Wet your hands. That way, if you guys wanna touch it, then the water is actually touching the frog, is the same water from the pond. Now, if your hands actually touch the frog, and you don't wash your hands like that, your salt from your hands can dehydrate the frog and kill it. I've seen it happen before where like, you're excited, like, oh my God, look what I've caught, look what I've caught. And you hold it too long, the next minute you open your hands, oh no, it's dead, and it's too late. I can't. All right, did I get one? I got some, I got some, guys. I got three, all in one scoop. We got three in one scoop. Now, who's gonna be the hand scooper? Whose hands are gonna be? All right, who has big hands? Because we have three tackles. Or we can do, get the three of you guys. Three, Isan, you wanna do one? So you do one, you do one, and you, you do one. Now, just scoop water in your hands like that. Go like this, and go like that, okay? And we got three tap holes, so we can each get one. All right, guys. So here, here it is. One, one for Francesca. Oh, great! Stop All right. Oh, here, one for Chloe, and one for Ethan. All right, guys. Look, 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 look. Now put your hands. Now make sure the water doesn't go out of your hands. Otherwise, you're gonna suffocate. Awesome, George. Good job, George. Everybody give a big hand for George. Catch him next frog. That was awesome. All right, guys, so check this out. Check this out, guys. Now look at this one. This one's different. This one is actually, all right, what other, what, we said we're going to find three species today. Pickle. Pickerel frog. It's not the pickle frog. It's the green frog. The green frog. Exactly. Now look at this one. Now if you look at it, guys, the green frog, let's just get, put, put a little bit of water in here. And you know what, hold on, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take, oh, oh, hold on a second. Nope. Well, maybe not yet, hold on a second. She's really jumpy. She's really jumpy, hold on a second. Let's get so, so we can see through the container. Now guys, now, now if you look really clearly, guys, you can see, remember I was telling you about, about along the, along the, the ear, that there's a line, you see that it's not wrapped around? You see it's different, that's why this one's a green frog. Now look guys, this is the difference between the, the oh, yeah, bullfrog. Now look, now look guys, you can see clearly. You see there, look at the, the ear. You see if, if you compare with the size of the head, is it bigger or smaller? Smaller. The ear, the, the ear though, the ear. Oh, that's oh, bigger. The ear, like if you compare the size of their head to the ear, the ear on their head is bigger. And then look at the, the line. You see that line I was telling you about? And guys, look, check this out. You see the throat puffing out? Is that a male or a female? Male. male. Yes, it's a male frog, so that's how you can tell the difference. And they, these guys stay a lot smaller than the um, than the bullfrog, so that's the, the, the main difference. Who's that guy frog? Let's just blind me. Let's get some more. All right, guys. Water snakes and bullfrogs share the same environment, however, not in perfect harmony. Eastern water snakes are a natural predator of young frogs. When the frogs get a bit older, 
The tables are turned and the snakes are dinner for frogs. If you look at the scales, guys, I want you guys to feel it. Guys, you guys can feel it. Just touch it. It has it has keeled scales. You can oh, wow. feel the scales. Feels it's really like it's cool. like a screen. It's like rough. And 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 so it's, it's different. Like for example, garter snakes have keeled scales also, but if a milk snake, like my friend Kelly found in her yard, they, those have smooth scales, but these aren't smooth, they're keeled. So it's very much like a rattlesnake or a venomous snake, but it's not venomous. It's a mimic. It's so awesome. This is awesome, guys. So you see like right here, if you look at the tail, they, they, they tell males from females by doing scale counts of the base of the tail. Oh, okay. So if they have less scales, then it's a female, more scales is a male. And so the males usually have longer tails. Now, I'm just gonna just go like that and, and yeah, she's getting a little bit antsy. And so usually like when they start doing like that, if you're not careful, they can start to bite you. But if you just go slowly and then just let them calm down, then, it, then it, usually you'll be okay. So there's a possibility by doing this, she could bite me, but I prefer to like hold them like this because when you hold them like that, then it's 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 less stress for them, you know what I mean? Right. And they're just they're just totally chilling out, you know. So she's chilling out, just chilling out. So here, just gently, just gently, because she's very aware. Like we're all watching her and stuff like that. Wow, guys, this is so cool. She's probably lived there all her life, and she she beat the odds, guys. When this snake's born, you know how small it is. This snake is like the, like the size of the tail when they're born. Like that's it. Like that's how small they are. Like this big. So for her to get this size and not get eaten by something or killed and survive, it's like they beat the odds. So. To take it home and put it in the cage, it's like it's kind of not fair to the snake. It's better to like always leave it as you found it, because then like you know when they beat the odds like that, it's like you know they deserve to like be free. So you know let just let them free. You know, when you're calm, they stay calm. Here, here, here. Eric, come on and hug. I found a tadpole. Eric, it's on too. That one's a, that one's the green frog. Remember, we're looking for the bullfrog tadpole, guys. So that's, that's a green frog one. Remember, it's a smaller one. That one's a green frog too. I think I found one. This one, this, this is a bullfrog, guys. This is a bull, bullfrog tadpole. This is exactly one. So everybody, give a big hand for Gabriella. She got it. This is awesome, guys. This is awesome. Yep, this is a North American bullfrog tadpole. I was just like taking the net and just walking around with it. Uh huh. And then I found it. Well, you know what? Scientists actually do that. They do transect. So a transect is when you go in one straight line through through a, in an area, and you and you and you go along, and whatever you catch as you go along. That's your transect. And so you almost did like a scientific thing called a transect where you find a specific species along the way and, and you found this bullfrog tadpole along the way because of what you were doing. So that's awesome. So and you can see this one actually it's actually has back legs already. So you see the back legs coming in? And if you look in the front, there's little pouches in the front of, for the front legs. So the legs, the front legs are now developing in the pouches in the legs, and and they're actually going to start to pop out very soon. And then once they those front legs pop out, the frog can't eat anymore. So right now it can still eat like like uh, the algae that it eats, but once the the front legs pop out, it can't eat anymore, and it and it uses all the energy from the tail to get all its food. Guys, I got one. I got it. Yeah. I got it. Which frog do you guys remember this frog is? All right, Mia, which frog is it? Um, bullfrog. It's a bullfrog. And why is it a bullfrog? What did I explain to you guys about the bullfrog? Because it has those folds on its, um... It's, remember what it is? Membrane? <laughs> yes, the membrane, the tympanic membrane. Yes, it has this fold along the tympanic membrane, so that makes it a bullfrog. Now, I told you guys something else. Now, everybody give a big hand for Mia for getting that right. That was awesome. She has the peace frog on. Now, the next part is, is um, so this frog right here, is it a male or a female? Francesca. It's male. It's a male. Almost right, but it's not a male because, now, George, why is it not a, 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 a male? Because it doesn't have yellow on its throat. Yes, remember? The, the yellow, yeah, so the yellow throat is the male. The, the male has a vocal sac that can puff out that big. The female doesn't have that, so this is the female. And if you look at the color of the female, usually they're like this kind of color brown. So that's the difference between the male and the female. Now, who remembers about the eyes of the frog? Like, what's important about the eyes? Dane. They can use them to chew their food? Yes, they can use them to sort of chew their food, to push the food down. So watch, guys. Now, this doesn't hurt the frog, but if you see the eyeballs, they bulge out. If I push the eye down just a little bit like that, very gently, 
it goes all the way inside the mouth. Now, if you guys want, I want you guys to look at the frog and point out some features of things that you might want to know about the frog. So, who wants to ask the question? Let's see, who wants to ask the question? Let's see, Dane. The webbed feet. The webbed feet. So, what do you want to know about the webbed feet? What about the webbed feet? What do you think they're used for? Uh, like pushing the water? Yeah, for pushing the water. So, this frog literally, it, just when we, we caught it just now, it was stuck in all the weeds, but it actually pushes the water with the webbed feet. So, you can see how big the webs are. This frog can jump about like, six times the length of its body in one jump. That would be like if you could jump from here out of the pond in one jump. Oh, hip bones, hip bones, here. You can see there, guys. Look, these are the hip bones of the frog would actually help the frog to jump even further. So those bones are really stationary and strong. So frogs are able to jump really high just like that because they have these really strong hip bones. So, and the web feet help it swim, but the legs, the power from the legs, you can see the legs, they actually help it to, to move like that. No hands, no hands. I wanna go grab my hand. I wanna touch him. All right guys, so here, and you can see her with her eyes open. Yeah, that was All right guys, so now let's see. We're gonna put this frog back, guys, so everybody say goodbye to the frog. Bye. How do you say goodbye to the frog? Yeah, you remember us. Everybody raise your right hand and say, I promise. I promise. To always, to always read 20 books. Read 20 books. About my pets. About my pets. Before I get them. After seeing so much, I'm so glad our children got a chance to learn more without getting dirty in the pond again. Hey you guys, it's research time, and now we're gonna look up facts about bullfrogs that we saw in the swamp earlier today. Oh, you know which one this is? Want to learn more about bullfrogs and other animals you saw on today's show? Visit your local library. It's been an awesome experience looking for tadpoles with our kids here. And make sure you always respect nature and enjoy. Bye! Bye. Bye.